In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a chart and have a matching cart chart here, basically, which will extract the data that we have in here. And of course, in this case, it doesn't look really very nice in CSS because the focus will not be on CSS, but just how we can match the data of this div in with the data that we have in here. So let's start to explore how to extract the highest value from the chart data in ChartJS. So the first thing what we want to do here is to go to chartjs3.com, getting started, this specific link here, and scroll down to get our default code. If you want to find this link, you can also find it in the description box. Once you have that, just make sure you copy this entire chunk of code here. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. I'm going to put it in here. Then I will cut out this and put it in there and save that. There we are. So the question was basically not really how to get the highest value, but to get a value or to have what we call a chart card. One with a chart in there and the other one we say like a, a highlighted data value. The question is very good, but there's just one thing we're going to the question, which is what do you want to highlight? In this case, it is very clear. We want to highlight the highest value, which would be 18. So we want to show that up in a separate div with that number. So let's start to do that one now. So I'm going to scroll down here. And what I want to do here is I'm going to use here a function. And this function is just basically our card. So we can say here maybe a bestseller or best performer, whatever you want. I'll just call it bestseller, although best performer would be probably more logical because we want to track our, our best day in sales, best day in sales. So that would be Monday or the amount here and Monday. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to copy this part here. We're going to create a new chart box, put it in here. And I want to focus on CSS in this video. And maybe if there's demand for CSS, let me know, put it in the comment section. We're going to that and I'll make a separate video for that. So, in here, I'm going to just make very simple. We're going to give it an ID. And this ID, we could say here, the day. And then we have another one here, will be the value itself. So what I want to show here is eventually Monday. And here it should be 18. However, this 18, we could maybe give it a style in here. So a little bit of CSS maybe should be all right. Just to highlight that, we're going to say here, font size, all right. And then we can make this 20 pixels. That's it, 20 PX, and maybe a, a font weight, that's the one, bolder, very basic. So if I save this now and refresh, there we are. So I will not do anything else on this one, but what I want, of course, this should be here based on whatever is here. So how do we do that? Well, we have the best day here, and the best day will eventually get two items. We have here the ID of the day and the ID of the value. So I'm going to grab here, and we're going to say here, uh, uh, let's say here, day. And this will be our constant. And that will be here, document dot get element by ID, and the ID that I want is the day ID. And I'm going to say here, inner text, will be whatever we want here. So let's say here, day. If I save this now, and then what I do is, save this and then refresh, you will see here now, oh, of course it doesn't work yet. Why it doesn't work here? Well, basically it's one reason. We didn't activate the function, or we didn't trigger it. So how will we trigger it? Well, we can just do here, for now, very simple one is basically just trigger it like this. So here, function trigger, save that, refresh. Now you can see here, this converts into day. So once we did this, another item is of course, not the day, but the value itself. So I'm not sure, was it value? Yes, ID of value. I'm going to say here, value, and this will be number. Save, refresh. So now we have this. Of course, this is not fully what we want, because what we need more is the following. Uh, we need to now extract specifically the value in here. So how do we get into this part here and then eventually get the highest value within this array? So the first thing is to get in there, what we need to do is we need to go from my chart. And I'm going to show it to you, control log. Let's start with my chart here. Save that. 
refresh. Let's open up developer tab. Then in here, now we're in the my chart. And if we scroll down here, because this is the my chart object, you can go here to the data object, click on this, and then you can see here data sets. And then we can go here down. You can get here the data and then with the number. So that's what I want to do now. So I'm going to say here dot data dot data sets and I'll just say index zero and then I'm going to say here dot data and here we can put in the items. So if I just do only this data I will get the full array of this and that's important for us because I want to get number one or uh, index zero which is the first element of this array so I want to grab that one but I cannot hard code this why if I just do it like this and later on we have a new value it's a higher item we get an issue here or we are having a conflict so what I need to do here is we have this part this is basically the array once we know this we can now start to use a specific function here so I'm going to say a constant I'm going to say a total sum and then uh, what I want to do here is well basically this is the total sum I realize that this is the total sum instead of the item what I want to do here is highest value so it's a max then what I'm going to do here is I say here map dot max then in here I want to grab the highest value we're going to copy that put in here the full array with triple dot so it's a duplicate this array and then look for in here the maximum value so if I do this and I do now console log of max we should get here if I save this refresh the highest value which is number 18 so I want to convert this now into number 18 so once I get this here I can just I guess we can just cut this out put it down here and say here this will be equal to that so now we have this one but of course here we have another issue how do we get then the matching day here so for that, what we need to do here is basically with the max value, we're going to use another array item because we already have the array here. This is the array he here. So what we want to do now is we want to figure out in what position is it, in which index. And in this case, it's index zero. So I need to get basically not the 18, but I want to get the number before that, basically the index number. So how do we do that? Well, we can do just here. You're going to copy this array here. We'll copy this. I want to say your constant index will be this, and I'm going to say your dot index of, which is a command or a method in the array to find an index with what. Well, basically, what I'm going to say is I'm going to put a number 18 in here, and I'm, I'm going to give the command please search within this array where number 18 is positioned. So, what I'm going to do here, number 18 will be, of course this max value which extracted the 18 soft code or dynamically this is very important so once i did this i get here and then maybe here instead of index you could say the day doesn't matter so we have this index here now if i copy this and i'll just only do here the index we should see here number zero not yet the day so if i save that refresh we get here number zero which is correct so if i do here let's say number three um or I just put in here number three save we get here number five, which is correct because zero, one, two, three, four, five. So now what I want is not the index number. No, I want the value of it. So how do we get the value? Well, you can see here we have one structure. And if I go up here as well, we need to go basically to the labels here. So we have here and then whatever the index is matches nicely with this. So what I'm going to do here is you say my chart dot data and then dot labels and once we did this bracket here for the index if I save this now and refresh you can see here now Saturday of course this Saturday was based on number three so if I'm going to grab here the next value put it in here save that refresh now we have this nicely connected and if I would change this let's say we're going to make this uh, 66 we should see here now it moves to Wednesday 66 which is equal here so this is very important with a card or basically with a highlighting a data point in a chart when you have all of this here showing this value here might be good but it must have a meaning so so what so this could mean Wednesday is one of the best selling 
or specifically uh, this Wednesday has an increase of 50% in sales compared to any other Wednesdays or compared to the highest selling day something like that there should be something more that would give a better explanation what this value truly means because this value here is just common sense shows here so having what we call a context around it a story where we can compare something with a and b gives it a higher value of a car chart so if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to go even farther with this because we can go far more advanced I will highly recommend you to explore this one here on how to display the Hoover tooltip values from ChartJS in a diff in HTML. So we did that already, but then in Hoover version. So you can then highlight even the most important items when you hover over a specific bar, for example.